When we talk about the conception journey, how often do we just look at how the physical body is working and primarily the female partner in the equation? How is her body working? But do we talk nearly enough about the other partner in the equation? What about the emotional state, the spiritual state? There are so many more aspects that go into conception beyond just sperm and egg coming together. Join me this week as I sit down with Christy Rich and talk about what holistic conception means and how important it is for the health of you, your pregnancy, and your baby. Hi, I'm Adrian Irizarry. I'm an Eastern medicine practitioner who is passionate about women's health and helping women live their best lives. My goal is to put you in the driver's seat of your menstrual health, offering period solutions for a symptom-free life. Statements made in this program are for educational purposes only and not intended as a substitution for medical consultation or advice. We do not claim to diagnose, treat, or cure any diseases. This podcast is inclusive and welcomes all gender identities. The focus of the program is on biological function and we will use the term women throughout, but it is referencing physiological and social challenges for biology, not identity. Come as you are, I am happy you're here and welcome all performances of identity. I hope you find something helpful in this show. Welcome back to another episode of the Reproductive Rebel Podcast. I am so excited. I know I say that every time I'm so excited about this guest, but I am because I meet the coolest people doing the work that I'm doing. And this guest today is absolutely no exception. Sometimes we look at the internet and feel a little more alone than ever, but I have to say it has been a beautiful gift for me in connecting me with like-minded professionals who are working in the same vein that I do. So welcome to the show, Christy. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. So happy to be talking for your audience. So Christy Rich and I had the opportunity to connect through social media and we totally hit it off. She works in a beautiful niche and one that I'm very passionate about. As I sit here in my third trimester postpartum at the age of prenatal, almost postpartum, we're getting there, at the age of 40. So tell the audience a little bit about who you are and what you do, Christy. Sure. So I have been in the holistic health and wellness field for about, gosh, about 20 years. I have been a business owner for 15 years, and I absolutely love the work that I do. So In the beginning, I was general, trying to help as many people as possible to overcome their chronic health conditions. I had a chronic health condition of my own for 15 years, which I was able to get to the root cause and conquer, overcome in one month, 100% naturally. So after that happened, I was so grateful. I was so happy that I wanted to help others to do the same. So I met so many people during those years who had a chronic illness and who were told by their doctor, there's nothing you can do. You just have to accept it. You have an incurable disease. There's nothing we can do. You just have to accept this is your fate. And I didn't accept it. And once I got better, I helped other women to conquer their illness as well. So that's the beginning of my journey. And as you mentioned, we connected and you were on my show, Holistic Me TV, fantastic guest. So you are on season two. So I can't wait to launch season two coming up soon and your episode, which is fantastic, sharing your story. And now I have niche down. So now I am still helping women, but I'm helping women along the pregnancy journey. So I'm specializing in helping those who wish to conceive naturally and who are older, who may be considered older, 35 and older, to conceive naturally, and not only to conceive naturally, but to be joyful and healthy all along the journey. So I believe this is very, very important, and I'm trying to star this, emphasize it, that it's not just about conceiving, but it's about busting myths, because there's so many myths, and also realizing it's important for you to be joyful and healthy all along the process, so that you're healthy in pregnancy, 
you have an empowered, healthy labor, and that you're healthy and joyful postpartum as well. And of course, that you have a healthy child. Absolutely. Ah, you touched on so many things there. So I was just listening to you talk about the beginning part of your journey with chronic illness, and you were just like me, unwilling to accept that this is just the way that it is. That is the whole creation story of my practice, too, is I was told the same thing. It's like, well, I don't know why you're having a hard time carrying and why you have recurrent miscarriage, but we can do IVF with ICSI. That was what I was told. And I'm like, hold on a second, but I'm conceiving. I'm just not holding. So how is IVF going to fix that? Yeah. And so I, I was like, well. I refuse to accept your reality and substitute my own. (laughs) Yes, yes. And also to understand there's a root cause, there's a reason. So just to say, we don't know what the reason is, but let's try some treatment. Let's get to the root cause first and then go with the different options. Absolutely. I 100% agree with you. And that is exactly why I became an Eastern medicine practitioner, why I went for search for answers. And I really, really felt aligned, called, and like the answers I was looking for were found in Chinese medicine and Ayurveda. And Mm -hmm. I am so much healthier than I ever thought I could be. I also live with a chronic condition. I have celiac. I think I've mentioned that on past episodes. I didn't realize that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that actually was contributing to my recurrent miscarriage. And that was an information that I was getting through the traditional Western lens So, you know, like I said at the opening of the show, I am 40 years old and I conceived naturally and I am almost 30 weeks with my son. And so the second part of what you were talking about, about having a joy filled pregnancy really resonated with me because not only am I super grateful to be pregnant with this rainbow baby, Mm. but how we feel emotionally during our pregnancy does imprint and affect our offspring or at least that's a chinese medicine belief is that you know you keep your emotions fairly stable and you know how you experience gratitude and your feelings all the way through like there have been a lot of things that have been coming up in my feed lately about you know you don't have to love being pregnant and Hmm. I feel sad when I see those posts and I know that not everyone's pregnancy journey is a positive one for a long list of reasons. Yes. The stories we walk into it with, the circumstances we find ourselves in and so on and so forth. However, I do believe all the ways that you can practice gratitude during that journey even if you're uncomfortable and you don't feel great and there are aspects of it that really aren't your favorite. I mean, I've had my own share of my hips waking me up at night and my son deciding he's going to have a dance party in there at four o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, dude, I have to work tomorrow. (laughs) Can you chill out a little bit? You know, but at the same time, like every time I feel him move, I say thank you and I'm grateful because it means he's healthy and he's growing and all the things that are supposed to happen are supposed to happen. And I, my last pregnancy is now almost 13 years old, walking around outside of my body, my last full term pregnancy. And like, I thought I had a fairly easy pregnancy with her mindset and the preparation that I put into my body to get ready for this little guy. I'm, like I said, 13 years older and my experience has been completely wiser. different. Yes. And wiser. Wiser. And I, I take much better care of my body in my late 30s, early 40s than I did in my 20s. And this pregnancy has been more ease filled. Wonderful. So I think that there's so much truth to what you're saying. And I love the fact that you emphasized these pieces in your opening too, because I really truly see, see why Christy and I totally connected. (laughs) I totally believe in what you're saying. And I think it is in those myth busting pieces. Let's talk a little bit about that. 
Oh, let's talk a lot about that. And first of all, I just want to say how happy I am for you. I'm so happy to have been, you know, a witness on this journey because when we met, you weren't sure if you were going to have another child. You weren't sure if it was in the cards. And I heard your story. And then now you are a mama. You will be giving birth soon. So mm -hmm. I just want to say how happy I am for you. Mm -hmm. And again, just resonate with so much of what you said. And I just want to emphasize it that one of the components that I like to emphasize with my clients is that it's so important to put the time in before you conceive. Mm, here, and here. This, yeah. And this is a part that I think a lot of people are missing is there's this philosophy of when we get pregnant is the right time. So it's kind of like the, oops, I'm pregnant, but it's the right time. And so I want to emphasize that it's very important for women to consciously conceive. And a lot of people who may be watching this may say, oh, well, that's for, per for people who have fertility issues. That's for people who aren't able to conceive. Then they need to consciously focus on it. But I say that's for everyone. Mm -hmm. And if you do the work beforehand, which you have put all the time and effort into, then you can see that not only are you preparing yourself physically to be healthy, to be strong, but you're also preparing yourself mentally. You're also going inward and saying, okay, well, what do I need to heal before I become a mom? You know, who will I then become once I'm a mom? Do, did I have a good relationship with my mother or do I need to heal that relationship before becoming a mom? Do I need to heal my traumas? Do I need to focus on my partner? Is he eating healthy? Is he taking care of himself? Are we under a lot of stress? So it's a lot to take into account beforehand, mind, body, and spirit. Mm -hmm. And also it's becoming informed about the whole journey before you become pregnant. Oh, so I, see, I love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I see so many people. And again, I've been researching this for over five years now. So I'm writing a three book series on childbirth around the world through a holistic perspective. And so many women would say, okay, well, when I became pregnant is when I started to research. I didn't know anything about pregnancy. I didn't know anything about labor or postpartum, but it was once I became pregnant, that's when I said, okay, give me the books. Let's take a childbirth class. And I believe that's not enough time. Mm. So I'm trying to inform women that you need to research. You need to read those books. You need to ask these questions before you become pregnant, because as you know, once you become pregnant, it goes by really fast. And you have your job, you have your career, <laughs> you've got so many things to do to prepare for this new life. And it's not enough time to then really thoughtfully be thinking without feeling the pressures and all the horror stories and information that's coming at you, whether you want it or not. Oh, so many good points there. Horror stories. Let's start there. People share their stories and birth story sharing is incredibly important. So I want to put that out there, okay? We all need to share our birth story. It becomes such a fundamental part of the fabric of who we are and our journey through postpartum as well. Yeah. So I am okay. not diminishing <laughs> the need to share those conversations. However, when people have really traumatic experiences, sharing those with a soon-to-be mom, whether they've gone through the labor process or not, colors the way that they feel about their own birthing body and their own birthing experience. Yes. And something that I tell my clients a lot is to figure out how to hold a healthy boundary around that. And to tell people, hi, like I would love to sit down and talk about birth stories after my child is born. Because again, we do need that sharing. We do need that community. Yes, we do. But <laughs> there are so many first time moms that get scared about the process. Well, and not even first time moms, moms who've had births before. And then they have friends that have had really scary stories for a wide variety of reasons. And I could probably do an entire episode on just that. But having that shared experience after the birth 
is so much more powerful because now you have stepped into your sovereignty. You've had your own birthing experience and you share from that place. Instead of having the fears of another color and shadow how you feel about your capacity and what it is that you're capable of doing. Yes. And I believe so many women, unfortunately, are using these horror stories to preach and to educate. Mm -hmm. And what I'm trying to do in my book series is to show the whole story. So not just a labor experience. Many women think that what happened in labor, the choices that happened in labor determine the outcome. Mm. And what I'm trying to emphasize, again, we need a holistic approach. We need to understand the root cause, just like we talked about understanding the root cause of chronic conditions and chronic illnesses. We need to understand the root cause of why birth complications happen, of why the woman developed chronic conditions in pregnancy or postpartum. And what many people don't understand is that it goes back to the health of the mom. So if the mom was very unhealthy even before she conceived, but was able to conceive, and if she didn't treat those conditions in pregnancy, then it can create a birth complication or possible health issues for the child. And so it's all connected. So if you just focus on what happened in the birth, you're not seeing the whole picture, you're not having the whole understanding, and you're actually sharing these horror stories that are only a portion of the story that don't really allow you to understand the full picture. Oh, beautifully said. Beautifully said. It's so true. And I just look at my own birthing experience the first time I had a home birth, mm. but I also was very much still a hard and fast A-type human being. And I do believe, looking back at it now and reflecting, that did play a role in how many hours I was in labor with my daughter mm. and her progression and where we got stalled out. And... I came into that pregnancy, newly diagnosed with celiac, mm. and my body did the thing, and I really think it's because I was young, but my daughter does have health stuff now that mm. if I could go back and do it all over again, because I wasn't intending to get pregnant, it was very much a surprise, <laughs> and like I feel guilty some days, and I've done everything that I can herbally to try to help her body heal. But then it trickled out into my postpartum. I had a horrible postpartum recovery. Oh, but really? I think it's because my body just was so empty and depleted of resources. It had nothing left to give. Mm -hmm. And I look at how I feel now and like it's night and day different. But I did a lot of work. So you were talking about not only the physical journey, but the emotional and the spiritual one. And I really want to highlight that part for a second sure. because I think that is a place that we do not put nearly enough emphasis because we look at our lab tests and we look at, you know, what is it that our body is doing? And we feel responsible when we don't get pregnant and we're trying to conceive. And, you know, you had talked about looking at the partner Yes, we need to talk about that a lot more because a lot more. they're half of the equation. And right now we are staring down the barrel of a really scary epidemic with male fertility. Mm. And more often than not, miscarriage can be associated with chromosomal abnormalities from the male partner. Yeah. So... This is a two-sided equation, and we're not looking at it that way. Like, heck, we can't even get a semen analysis for our partner without going to our OBGYN. Oh, really? Mind-boggling. Yeah. Crazy. My husband and I dealt with that, actually. His PCP said to have my OB make the order. And he was like, what? These are my test results. And, and it because the entire fertility equation is handled on the woman's side. But that um, takes a toll on how we as women feel of because course. this is supposed to be like the most basic innate thing that our body can do. And we step up to the plate and go, OK, I'm ready to have a baby. And then when it doesn't work, we think that it's us. 
And I've yeah. had people come in that have super healthy cycles. And I'm like, has your partner had a semen analysis done? And like, I start probing into the emotional and the spiritual side of the equation and there's work to be done there. Even yeah. though the physical body, you know, there are things that are showing up, but not, you know, nothing alarming in terms of like, Houston, we have a to work in this particular area. My son came in after a massive amount of spiritual awakening on my side. Wonderful. I, I've had certain bursts of that throughout the course of my life, but I can definitely say last year was probably the most rugged part of my spiritual awakening journey that I have ever been mm. through. And as I walked out the other side of it, feeling like, well, originally I had been through the ringer and then <laughs> and then it got better and I saw why it all happened. And then my son came in. He was like, okay, mom, now you have the space for me. Let's do this. Wonderful. So, you know, so the spiritual side of it is a big component. And I think, I think it's beautiful that you're looking into this with your work because mm -hmm. from my own personal experience and watching the journeys of so many of my clients, the emotional and spiritual side is so important. So important. I'm going to pause this incredible episode to share an opportunity for you to join me as a reproductive rebel. As you know, I'm a holistic women's health practitioner who practices with a focus in East Asian medicine. I truly am one of a kind in the way that I practice, and that is a part of what makes me a rebel. I am here to disrupt a healthcare model for women and provide natural and effective solutions for all phases in a woman's life. Do you feel called to make a difference in women's health, whether you are already a practitioner working in this space, wishing to add to your toolkit, or you are just a passionate rebel with a calling to make a difference for others as I was at the start of my career in this field? The Holistic Women's Health Practitioner Program is open for enrollment. I am looking for passionate, committed, and heart-centered people who desire to make a difference in the women's health space and desire to make it a place where women feel seen and heard, where their needs and concerns aren't gaslit, but really taken seriously and met with compassion and education to help them reach their goals. Does this sound like you? If so, please check out the program link in the show notes and schedule a one-on-one -on -one talk with me or join a free information session. Or if you know that without a doubt, this is where you want to go, enroll and get started today. Together, we will make a difference for the future of women's health care. I can't wait for you to join me. I have never met anyone as charismatic and downright passionate about women's health as Adrian Irizarry is. Not only is it just a delight to be in her presence as a friend, but as a student, her passion for her work, it comes through so prominently and it helps ignite the excitement that lives inside of me as her student. We literally laugh, we cry, we share, we support. The knowledge is endless and the infinite capacity of her being for this work and teaching and mentoring is just astounding. It's so beautiful. I can't think of a better instructor to be working with with this topic. We are powerful. Women hold the most beautiful power within their beings. And Adrian is the perfect example of she. She is the epitome of woman. And now back to the show. And Western medicine, unfortunately, looks at the physical body. Mm -hmm. So as you said, and I love that we're busting myths, they say that it is the physical body, and that's the reason why the woman can't conceive, why she can't become pregnant. And it's very important that you see mind, body, and spirit. That's three, right? So if you're only focusing on the physical body, that's only a third of the equation. Mm -hmm. So we also need to focus on our mental well-being. We also need to focus on being supported, 
by whatever you believe in, the universe, God, angels, your community, and it's all connected. So the organs, as you know, in Chinese medicine, they all work together. It's not just one organ does everything on its own, by itself, solitary. So it's the same thing if you consider the mind, body, and spirit. And I think it's very important for people to include joy as part of their conception journey because joy is a very unlooked part of our health. And if you are joyful, then you are not stressed. And so much stress causes chronic conditions. Mm -hmm. And one of them may be fertility issues. So if we add this, if we have more fun along the journey, instead of just being like, I've got to get this result, it's got to be this way, and it's got to be by this time, this clamping, rigid response, if you relax and if you are trusting and if you believe, which is so hard, I mean, mm -hmm. trusting is one of the hardest things we can do is to trust that the timing is right, trust that our dreams will materialize because we have no evidence of it. But if you can allow yourself to enjoy your life, no matter what, enjoy things in your life, to know what lights you up, to enjoy time with your partner. This is going to help you so much, and this is going to help you to then welcome in your baby. So important. It really is. So what are some of the things that you recommend to your clients to do to bring more joy into their experience? Oh, so much, so much. So I am doing a lot of programs now to encourage people to be joyful. I've got a joy program right now. And actually, even before I went into health and wellness, I was an actress. I was an actress and a comedian. So now I'm bringing more of that into my services. So I'm offering expressive healing arts. So we learn about different acting techniques to vocalize, to express yourself, mind, body, and spirit. And also, I'm going to be starting up some improv classes, too, so people can just really let loose and have fun and get in touch with their inner child. And I have a specific program that's called Detox for Joy, the Moms to Be edition. And that is to help you, again, to prepare before you conceive. So it's to help you to get your body healthy, but also to help you to learn different things such as meditation, such as having time for dancing, having time in nature, etc., and making this be a part of your daily routine. So it's not just about doing something for a short amount of time. It's really about developing a holistic lifestyle. And so that's what I'm teaching my clients. I'm giving them lots of tools, but it's really you choose what you wish to incorporate so that you feel filled up mind, body, and spirit. I love that. So in the show notes, we're going to include ways that you can get in touch with Christy and all of her amazing tools. So if you're listening to this and you're even thinking about the possibility of getting pregnant and you haven't started your journey yet, I definitely would encourage you to check these tools out. I also want to talk a bit about the book series because this is one of the places that I totally connected with Christy. And I was just like, yes, get this information out there. <laughs> She's another reproductive rebel, right? So talk to us a little bit about your three book series and what you are putting together as an incredible resource to share with the world. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for asking. So it is a three book series. It is based on about 100 interviews that I have done with moms and childbirth experts around the world. And I'm so happy that you are going to be interviewed as well. So I look forward to your interview. And it is really capturing these candid, heartfelt stories from moms all around the world. I didn't curate it ahead of time. I didn't say I'm only looking for these certain stories or certain health conditions. I just said, OK, universe, I know I'm supposed to write this book. and Whoever is meant to be in this book, come. Come ask me for an interview and I will interview you. So I had some moms who actually had never shared their story before. Wow. I was the first person that they shared their story with before because either one, they were afraid of being shamed or two, they hadn't healed certain parts of it. They didn't feel comfortable sharing it for other reasons as well. And one of the things I was most surprised from doing these interviews, I am not a mom myself, so this was new to me, was how much shame moms had. Mm. They had so much shame about the birth, about 
how they conceived, about different choices they made. And they also share with me that there is a lot of shaming among women. And this is something I didn't know, shaming among moms. Mm -hmm. So quickly after I started interviewing and started to enthusiastically share on social media, and I thought this would open up doors with my enthusiasm, instead I saw that there were two distinct sides. And one side was medicated and the other side was unmedicated. Mm -hmm. And women were not able to bridge the two and see how, you know, they were all moms and they were doing this amazing, miraculous thing together. Instead, they were judging and criticizing and shaming. Mm -hmm. And then some women were shaming themselves. So I said, okay, I was wondering why I'm supposed to write this book. I've never had a child of my own. And I'm a healer. I've been a healer for 20 years. This is it. This subject needs healing. So book one is called Healing Childbirth, and it will showcase women from all around the world. I do go into certain chronic conditions and understand the root cause of why they occurred and also even birth complications. And one of the surprising things about book one, again, I was completely open to the universe, was that the chronic condition that most women had that they shared, do you want to guess what it was? Wolf. I could put a few in that category. <laughs> okay, give me a few. Well, diabetes is a big one. Diabetes is big. It wasn't yep. diabetes, though. Gestational diabetes. And this can be any time, pregnancy or postpartum. Oh. Okay. Or even, well, it could actually be also before, so fertility issues, but I'll give you the clue. It's not fertility issues, so either in pregnancy or postpartum, something that women around the world, it was very, very common for them. Stress. Not stress, but it was postpartum depression. Mm. So postpartum depression was very common. And what also surprised me is that most women who shared that they had it didn't know they had it until after it passed. Yep. So most women did not get any help, did not get any treatment, did not even share it with anyone what they were struggling with. There was only, I think, two women who got help, who got treated. All the rest did not get any help. And so I want to bring this awareness, too, about postpartum depression and the symptoms, because most people think it's just being depressed, and there are a lot more symptoms than that. And it's very important that moms-to-be know and also those in their community know so they can help them. Yeah, I think that's so critically important. That dovetails with the stress piece, actually, because w from my care lens, there's a big part of the postpartum depression piece that has to do with replenishment after birth and circulation being compromised as a result of that, that was actually what led to my answer of stress because it's either situational or they're not getting enough of something and it's creating a stress around the body. But it is, it is far too common. Very common. And actually I did some research and in Asia, they say that 65% of moms develop postpartum depression. Wow. And this is very surprising because a lot of women believe that postpartum depression is due to not enough support. Mm -hmm. But in most Asian countries, they are all about supporting the mom and going to visit for extended amount of time and cooking for her, even sometimes bathing her, etc. And still the levels are so high. So I am doing research on this. So this is something that your audience can participate in. I have a childbirth survey. So if they have had a child, if they did give birth to a child, I know there are some moms out there who did not give birth to their children. So if you gave birth and you would like to be a part of this book series, you can contribute by filling out a survey. So the survey is for anyone. You could have had a hospital birth. You could have had a birthing uh, center birth or a home birth. You could have had medication. You could have had no medication. It could have been many years ago. It could have been a few weeks ago. But I'm collecting this information to have a greater understanding of several things. And one of the illnesses I'm interested in is postpartum depression. So postpartum depression and postpartum psychosis to understand the root cause better. 
So we'll put that in the show notes. I'll make sure I give you that link so they can contribute if they'd like to. Definitely. That's amazing. I didn't know that statistic in yeah. Asian countries. That's amazing. Yeah. And in the U.S., we don't know exactly how high it is because most women, again, do not get treatment. Most yeah. women have the shame that I'm not being a good mother. And instead of getting help, they hide it. So we don't know. We think it's about 10 to 15 percent. But seeing how high it was in Asia, I have a feeling it's a lot higher. Wow. This is such important work. The link will definitely be in the show notes. I highly encourage as many of you as is comfortable. And Christy and I had talked about this information gathering that she's doing. Their information remains anonymous, correct? They can be anonymous in the childbirth survey if they would like to potentially win a prize. I am giving out prizes as an incentive to fill out the surveys. They can leave their name and email and their names will not be included in the book. I will only contact them if they win a prize. But if you're anonymous, then you can't be up for a prize because I don't know who you are. <laughs> so it's optional if you want to be anonymous or be up for a prize. Perfect. Awesome. So yes, there is nothing to lose and everything to gain and help others with. So yeah. everybody who is listening, if you meet the criteria for this survey, I would highly, highly encourage you to do so because you are helping future generations of women. Yes, to, exactly. To, to not suffer in silence the way that you did. Exactly. And that's why I'm doing this book series so that women have the information so they can make informed decisions, informed choices, and also so that we can help future women. So we can help future women and also, of course, babies, because the choices that we make not only affect us, but our children as well. I love that. Beautiful. So I want to be totally respectful of your... Respectful of my time? Yes, respectful <laughs> of... <laughs> I read your mind. <laughs> See how in tune we are. I can speak your language. I love it. I love it. So if people want to get in touch with you, Christy, I definitely want to make sure that we include your contact information in here because I think the work that you're doing is so incredibly important. And there's Thank so you. many ways that this audience can interact with everything that you are offering. Thank you so much. So they can go to my website. So the name of my business is The Dancing Curtain. So they can go to my website, www.thedancingcurtain.com. And again, we're going to put the link for the childbirth survey in the show notes. But even if you go to my homepage, you can still click on the button to fill out a childbirth survey. And if there are some doulas who are listening to this episode as well, I have created an international doula directory as well. So this is for doulas, for them to promote what they do. And again, this is for doulas who help in pregnancy and in birth and in postpartum, not just the birth experience. Again, a lot of women think doulas are only for the birth experience, want to bust that myth. They help all throughout the journey. And so if you're interested in being a part of this free directory, that again is on my homepage on my website, just click on it. And then if you're a mom-to-be who's interested in learning about doulas, the directory will be available later on once I collect a few more. But again, that's absolutely free for moms and also for doulas. So everything's there. You can also follow me on social media. I'm on Instagram at Christy Rich, K-H-R-I-S-T-E-E-R-I-C-H. And Facebook is the name of my business, The Dancing Curtain. I'm on a lot of other places too. But again, if you go to my homepage, you will see all of the social media info there. And also, I want to invite all of you to check out Holistic Me TV. Season two is coming up later this summer, and that will be all about the pregnancy journey. So Adrian will be one of my guests sharing about her journey and many other health experts from all around the world. So that's Dancing Curtain on YouTube. We'll put that in the show notes as well. And, uh, you know, I'm just so thankful for everyone watching this episode. I hope that you got some value from it. I hope that you learned something new and that if you are on the pregnancy journey, if you would like to conceive naturally, that you're inspired that it can happen. 
So we didn't bust a lot of the myths I like to talk about, but even if you are over 35, just like Adrian said, it is possible to conceive naturally. And also it's not just the woman who is responsible. So it is important also to check on your spouse's health as well and to treat yourself mind, body, and spirit. Also, I want to leave a free gift for all of you so you can go to www.thedancingcurtain.com slash seven myths moms need to know. So seven myths moms need to know. And I have some top myths that are spread that you need to know about before you go into labor. Okay, very important to bust these myths. Some myths are that you cannot eat or drink during labor. I bust that myth. The United States is one of the few countries that says you cannot eat or drink in labor, but in most countries around the world, they do allow that. So I bust some other myths as well as the baby's too big to be delivered vaginally. You need to have a C-section or the baby's too big. You need to be induced right away before the baby grows any bigger. Mm, <laughs> okay, I, so very I feel important. another episode coming on, Christy. Yes, <laughs> yes, I think so. <laughs> I think so that much. we should so do a whole myth busting episode because there are so many of them. And I think that would be awesome to share with people what it is that you've learned about them. That'd be great. Be happy to. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Christy. As always, it is a pleasure to sit down and talk with you. I've had an opportunity to sit with Christy for several different opportunities over the course of the last year. And it's always a pleasure, my friend, to connect with you and we'll make plans to do another episode. Sound good? Let's do. Sounds <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us for today's episode and we'll see you again next week. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Reproductive Rebel. Reproductive Rebel is recorded by certified peristeam hydrotherapist and acutonics practitioner, herbalist, and Chinese nutritional therapist, Adrian Irizarry of Moon Essence LLC. If you are interested in setting up an appointment for one-on-one -on -one support, ordering from our store, or checking out our course offerings, visit our website at moonessence.life. Be sure to subscribe to our newsletter and get insider information on upcoming events and offerings. Join the conversation, like and follow us at Moon Essence Me on Instagram, Facebook, or LinkedIn. Your voices make this program possible. Thank you all for your continued support.